In this video, we are going to be looking into seven differences between coaching teams and coaching individuals. While there are similarities in skills and tools that remain the same, there are many differences. And as an agile coach or a scrum master or a consultant, you probably know that when you're dealing with a team, you don't use necessarily the same techniques or the same approaches that you would be using with an individual, whether that is a VP, that is a team member, a product owner, etc. So let's start with the seven differences. And then in the end, I'll talk to you about what are the common skills that remain the same, no matter if you're coaching a team or an individual. The first is collaboration focus. When you're coaching teams, you definitely have a moment where you emphasize teamwork, the communication, the management of interdependencies within the team and with other people outside of the team. You're basically trying to help the team see themselves as a unity. And as a unity, sometimes I bring my strengths and I bring my weaknesses and those even out and balance out with all my other team members. When you're coaching individuals, you're really focusing on the personal growth. So we amplify all the strengths they have and even use their strengths to uh, double down and close in the gaps of the things that really don't work as well. Another thing that is different from individual one-on-one -on -one coaching and the team coaching is that you need to create a collective goal. The team needs to understand and align around goals and visions and the mission that rings true for everybody. If there's one person that's not solved, this is not going to work. So what we understand by quality and what we understand by um, the results that we need to deliver need to be understood and agreed upon by everybody. And as you can imagine, it can be sometimes a struggle to help everybody see eye to eye. It will never be fully the same, but what you're trying to do there is equalize the understanding on the goals and make sure that people are all pointing and moving in the same direction. And you do have goal setting in individual one-on-one -on -one, and you do have goal settings in individual coaching, of course, it's the hallmark of coaching, but it's much easier in the sense that the, the goal, the objective is owned and sometimes even crafted by the individual sitting in the coaching session with you. Although sometimes it's also shared with their sponsors or their major stakeholders. The third item related to the first two is facilitation. Facilitation skills are a must for an agile coach. You're not coaching all the time. So what is facilitation? Facilitation is when you intervene in group, in collective settings, and make sure that everybody is being heard, everybody is being understood, dialogue is being created instead of people just screaming or disagreeing. You try and, and capture pinpoints. You can even offer a structure for how the conversation or the meeting will be taking place. So it's very useful for you to organize and, and amp up team dynamics and improve on collaboration, etc. Process improvement is the next one. This is also not present in individual coaching. Process improvement relates to how the group of people, that team, will be performing their work. So um, how do they improve their delivery process? How they improve, um, you know, their, their meetings? How to enhance effectiveness and efficiency in general? So talking about effectiveness can be a subject for one-on-one -on -one coaching for sure, because your efficiency and your effectiveness on a personal level is always a great subject for discussion. But it is a must in team coaching. When we talk about continuous improvement in the context of team is improving how they work together and how they create an environment around themselves that allows for even more improvement to keep coming. And then there's conflict resolution. Conflict exists in life. Conflict can be seen as an opportunity. That's how I like to see. That's how I like to help others see it. But individual coaching, you can only see conflict situations through the eyes of your coachee, the person being coached. So usually we focus on them and how they feel and what they can do because we are not in the situation with them and the other person or the other people where the conflict is happening. They are not in the room with us. It's just you and the other person. Now, usually in the group setting, in a team setting, you will be seeing conflict as it arises. It's happening there in the team and it, go, it will range from, um, um, opinions that are 
diverging and you, I think you should do this, I think we should do that, to full on people disagreeing in a very disrespectful way. So there are very important skills to be used here in how you act on the simplest scale of conflict versus full on battle war is not the same. Not every coach can actually operate in this scenario, but it's definitely a sort of skill that in order to coach a team, you will need to have a little bit of that to offer. The next one is performance metrics. And this one is definitely different when you're operating one-on-one -on -one versus with a team. Performance metrics for the individual, as you can imagine, they have to do with where the individual wants to grow and are they getting there? And that's usually, although you can try and make those very invisible and very concrete, a lot of that have to do with personal growth. That's why individuals do coaching in the first place. So something that shifts inside of them, sometimes it's hard to measure with specific numbers out there. But in the context of team, we have to really remember that we are talking about several people operating as a unity. And that makes it all oh so, so much different. One example could be that when you think of the dashboards, right? And you can revisit my masterclass on metrics or the mini class I did on retrospectives. They are uh, one of the latest videos in here. And when we look at that, first, you have to have the team agree on what are the things that you want to measure when you're an individual. You don't have to agree on anything. You just have to have an insight and want to do it. But as a team, you have to agree, you have to define, and you definitely need to be a little bit more focused on some objective parts because we already have so many people having feelings and subjective opinions. So feeling grounded, being grounded in some data is extremely powerful for teams progress and success. So performance metrics in, in form of numbers and charts and data is really important for advancing the harmony and the success and the effectiveness of the team. And the final one is timing. Honestly, one-on-one -on -one coaching can happen at any time. So long as the coachee, the person that wants to be coached, wants it and it's willing, they will make the time and then that's how they go. In the context of teams, however, the good theory and practice of team coaching will tell you that there are more specific, more moments that are conducive to better team coaching. So when you are forming a team, when you're slowing down because of a milestone or because something really important needs to be assessed, whenever you tame, you create that time and that space for some stop the craziness of delivery and let's give things some thought. That is a prime spot for coaching. There are several other things that as an agile coach or a scrum master, you could be doing when the team is in the heat of delivery, but don't try and coach people when they are in that state. It's just not a great moment. It's just not a useful moment. Coaching is not the tool for that um, specific time. So before I move into what is common, let me know in the comments down below if there's one of these seven that you really felt like, yes, that is absolutely something that I see as different. Or if there's something that you were surprised and you thought it was basically the same for individual coaching or team coaching, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. So now let's jump into what are the similarities? What are the, the skills and the tools in coaching that you bring, whether this is team coaching or individual coaching? The first thing that you're going to bring that will work, whether this is an individual coaching or a group coaching and group coaching means several people. So it could be a team, but it could be with a working group is your approach. The approach won't change. I use agile. I use systemic coaching and I use solution focused coaching. I put that mesh wall together and that creates my own approach, my own style that works no matter if I'm talking to one person or with a hundred person with a hundred people. And yes, you can coach a hundred people. Group coaching does exist. Um, it, like you saw there, it requires different skills, but you can, you can do that. But the approach, how you create the space for the people receiving the coaching, that doesn't need to change at all. The second thing that is absolutely the same, and it is required both in individual coaching and in group coaching is the willingness to work with you. 
the coachee, one or many, they need to be willing to do that work. They want to, you know, you want them to agree that this is a good thing, that they are excited, that they can see uh, what kind of problem that solved for them, that they can really find it useful. You can't persuade people to do coaching. Uh, that's a whole nother video that we can talk about um, some other time. But the point is there has to be willingness, even if there is some resistance, because we will always encounter some resistance and some some parts in us that we don't want to change when we do coaching we start very willing like yay let's do this and then we encounter a few moments where we're like Ugh, not so sure but that underlying foundation of trust and willingness to work with a coach must exist before the coaching starts the third and final thing that doesn't change whether you're coaching one person or many is your foundational coaching skills so your ability to listen attentively, powerfully, to create a, a space of trust for the person in front of you, to ask powerful, timely, relevant questions and adapting, letting really the coachee uh, or one or many lead the conversation where it needs to go because remember, they are on the driver's seat. So that won't change at all. That sort of skill you already need to bring to the table. And with that, I guess I could say the relationship is also going to develop in a similar way. So whether you're coaching one person or a whole team, the first time you enter that coaching session, there can be still a little bit of awkwardness. You're learning a little bit about each other, how to work together. Many months down the line, the whole thing feels so at ease. You just come to the session really prepared, ready to work together. And even the interactions in between sessions are very different too, because there's a lot of trust. The relationship now is built and it's solid and, um, and it just, you know, just, just giving time to the relationship is something that is required, whether you are going to coach one person, one individual or a whole team. Before I end this video, I would like to invite you, if you're really interested in becoming a better Scrum Master, a fantastic Agile coach, someone who really wants to master these skills that we talked about, conflict navigation, really helping a team grow in performance, both in the, in the productivity part of things, but also in the positivity side of things. If you really want to learn how to become a great coach, develop these foundational coaching skills that I mentioned here, you want to join my Agile Coaching Program, we are running our very final cohort this year, now in November, and it's the updated version where I've done a lot of, I incorporated a lot of the good feedback. It's even better than it used to be. It is a very powerful one. You do get certified by uh, by IC Agile as an ICP ACC. You also get, I did all the homework to get you the hours of continued education with the ICF, which is basically the gold standard of coaching internationally. So the program is really powerful and I won't be running it for the next five or six months. So not before April next year, 2024. So if you're really excited to get to the next level in your career, if you enjoy how I teach and how I coach, if you see me around on LinkedIn here on YouTube or anywhere else and you're like, you know what, I'm going to give this a go, you will love it. And I can't tell you how excited I'll be to see you there. So I hope you can join in any case this video and here. And I hope it was a useful video. And I'll catch you in the next one, my friend. Bye for now.